It is Friday Night Hits right now, the second round of the playoffs. Welcome in. I'm Mark Whiteman. Thanks as always for joining us. 20 area teams still in the hunt for a state championship. And what a year it's been for the Clinton Red Devils. Their first undefeated regular season since 2000. 11-0 after an opening round win and at home against the BHP Bears, whose only loss this year came back in September. It's our Sparrow Financial Game of the Week, and Julie Morris was there. Clinton and BHP are two of the top teams in the state this year. The Red Devils entered this matchup with an 11-0 record, while the Bears were 10-1. Both teams battling early on, game tied at 7 in the second quarter. Clinton's Jaden Robinson finds a hole and breaks free. A 47-yard touchdown run puts the Red Devils on top, 14-7. Still in the second, Bryce Young throws to a wide open Justin Copeland who takes it 75 yards for his second touchdown of the game. He also had a big time 95 yard kickoff return for a score. Red Devils stretch their lead to 21 to 7. But BHP answers right before halftime. Marquise Henderson finds the edge and cuts down the sideline, finishing the run with a dive into the end zone. Bears missed the extra point after the touchdown, so Clinton is up 21 to 13 at the break. Still an eight point game at the end of the third quarter. In the fourth, it's Copeland again. He gets some great blocks and he's gone. A big time touchdown to put the Red Devils up 28 to 13 and Clinton's defense shuts down the Bears down the stretch. Clinton holds on for a win, 28 to 13, the final score. Just super proud of our players, super proud of our coaches. Defense played a heck of a ball game tonight, and uh, it was a defensive ball game. With the win, Clinton improves to 12-0 on the season, while the Bears finish the year with a 10-2 record. In Clinton, I'm Julia Morris, WYFF News 4 Sports. Julia, thank you. The reigning 5A champion Gaffney cruising past Rock Hill last week in their journey towards a repeat, while JL Mann won their first playoff game since 2009. Patriots going on the road trying to take down the champs, but Gaffney knows what it's all about this time of year. And here is head coach Dan Jones, one win shy of the school record. First quarter, Gaffney's Grayson Loftus. That's all me. The six yard score, seven nothing. Gaffney still in the first. After Jail Man fumbles the kickoff, Loftus unwinds to Jamarcus Smith. Nothing but green grass in front of him, 56 yards. Gaffney's up 14-0 and pouring it on our USC Upstate play of the week. Loftus eluding the pressure, going down the field to Smith again, who looks it in on the fingertips. What a grab that was. This one's all Gaffney, 42-7. And with his 120th win, Dan Jones becomes the all-time winningest coach at Gaffney. Every victory, you know, is sweet. So I'm fortunate enough to have 120 of them right now. Gaffney picks it up a notch when it comes playoff time. And, you know, that's the tradition here. Are you going to withhold it or are you going to be ones that let, let it fall by the wayside? Gaffney will play the winner of Saturday's Burns at Blythewood game. Spartanburg surging. The Vikes have won three in a row, taking on T.L. Hanna, who won their eighth straight last week, slipping past White Knoll. Hanna moving. Kenny Fretwell hit from behind, fumbles the ball. Peyton Jones jumps on it, and that sets up Spartanburg's Raheem Jeter, the Mr. Football finalist, plowing right on through, seven nothing. Spartanburg, the Vikes go surprise onside kick, and Jaden Coleman recovers. They get a field goal out of the stolen possession, and leading 13 to nothing now in the second, Jeter connects with Quay Moore. They're calling, he's hauling, and Spartanburg sprints into the third round, 39 to 14. They will play the winner of Dutch Fork versus Dorman. We've got highlights of that one still to come. Revenge on the minds of the Red Raiders. Greenville reached the upper state final a year ago before falling to eventual champion South Point. Those very same Stallions traveling to Serene tonight. Greenville's won their last eight after that 0-3 start, but they have never before beaten South Point. Defensive battle early. Greenville up 3-0 in the second near midfield. Bryson Drummond. Directing traffic eventually finds his guy, MJ Bennett, the Tennessee commit, hitting it behind the defense and down the sideline. Red Raiders add to their lead. It is 10 to nothing. After a South Point score, it's 10 7, and this is our Mr. Sparky drive of the week. Third and long, Drummond to Carmelo Canty just plucks that one off the grass, matriculating the ball down the field. Drummond on the move again, evading pressure. And just pitches it out to Elijah Jones at the last second to keep the chains moving. And on the very next play, Tyler Brown is 
a problem. Hit him on the screen, and Brown is off to the races. 21 yards for the Greenville touchdown at 17-7 at the half. Now it's a 17-14 game into the fourth. South Point going on fourth and short, but Malachi Marshall can't hang on to the snap. Turnover on downs, and with the short field for Greenville on third and goal, Drummond back to pass to the fullback. Big 44, Cameron for Fowder. Red Raiders hang on. Greenville 24, South Point 20, and they're on to the Upper State Semifinals where they'll host Catawba Ridge next week. Westside's been about their business all year. Already their best campaign since 2016. Pushing forward in the playoffs against Indian Land. Outstanding football game. Westside down in the fourth quarter, but Hunter Puckett had a steam. Mosey's in. Rams take back the lead up by four after a two-point conversion. Indian Land answers back. Less than two minutes to go. Jaden Singletary won't be denied. 20 yards put the Warriors out in front once more, 35 to 32. But with three seconds left, West Side on the doorstep. Puckett understands the assignment, drives on in. And West Side is on to the third round of the playoffs with a 39-35 win. They will face the winner of Saturday's game between Greenwood and Northwest. All right, we have reached halftime here on Friday night. It's still to come. The Dorman Cavaliers down in the Midlands taking on the Dutch Fork Dynasty, plus games in 3A and 1A. But tonight, once more, a special thank you to all the coaches that graciously wore a microphone every Friday to make this segment possible. A best of edition of Eric Mitchell Real Estate, mic'd up. We light it up, baby. Light it up! This is four down territory, okay? This is four down territory. Go show him, hey, go show him who bumps. Man, I love you. Play for each other, have fun. Look at both sides. Yeah, it's the cousin's pants. Can't just hold on, hold on. The effort's good, but you gotta let go. Hey, that's perfect, that's perfect. If you mark this up right, my man can hit that hole. I can tell you what we'll be doing here in a minute. 